What is happening, YouTube? How y'all doing today? It is Joe, just your average Joe. It is Thursday. Happy Thursday. Hopefully your sales are going well. Mine are going okay. We have uh, we have a few sales to go over and we got a few comments to go over. So this is going to be a shorter video than normal. Uh, but if you haven't been around before, uh, I've been reselling full time on eBay for about eight ish years, give or take. And but uh, been buying and selling on eBay since 2000. So I've been around a long, long time, been around, done a lot. Uh, so hopefully, you know, if you have any questions about anything, let me know. I can certainly help. Uh, but we got, we got, uh, this will be a shorter, I think I already said that this will be a shorter video than normal because we don't have a ton of sales and we don't have a ton of comments. So, uh, there we go. There's that. Also, I probably, I'm going to try to do maybe a, sh I've always said this when I go on vacation, I'm starting vacation tomorrow. Uh, put my store on vacation mode starting tomorrow through Monday. Uh, we're heading to Florida for three, maybe four days and, uh, visiting some friends. Um, so we will, uh, we will, uh, won't be around much. Uh, if any, I am going to source on Saturday morning. So if I pick up anything good, maybe I'll do a short and throw a short out there. Uh, but I won't be back recording again. It's probably Tuesday when we go over all the orders from, uh, from the time I was away. So, um, there's that. Just wanted to share that for folks that are hanging around and, and watching for folks that are new. Welcome. Uh, if you enjoy any of the content, Make sure you subscribe. We're, we're knocking at the door 500. So we're at like not 493. So super appreciate all y'all support and continued watching and and uh, commenting. That's, I love the comments. And again, anything you guys want to touch on specifically, drop comments. Any of you new sellers, sellers that are thinking about selling that don't know how to dive in or don't know what to do on this or that. If it comes to eBay, I, I think I can. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty well versed. I can certainly help. Am I, am I an expert? close but maybe not quite an expert i always there's always some things i'm not going to know uh or haven't come across but i've certainly been been through quite a many ordeals so and know pretty well how ebay works and operates so anyway certainly here to help that's the main thing um but let's go ahead and start with comments and then we'll jump into what sold um let's start off with uh winston winston says sage advice joe winston i appreciate you hanging around man thank you for your support and, uh, and, and Hey, you know, I, I try, man. I just try to, I try to give some nuggets along the way and help you guys along your journey. Um, Paul fine says free shipping sucks when you have to ship from one coast to the next, uh, Paul fines. Thank you for commenting. And you are not wrong, sir. I'm in North Carolina. It always blows me away when people in California are like, your shipping's too high. I'm like, so then what I do, I just try, I, I be a smart ass without being a smart ass. I go to you, you post office.com and I plug in their address or their zip code in California somewhere. Cause I don't know their actual address uh, or I'll ask them what's your zip code. And then they'll give me their zip code. And I now go in there and I'll just plug in their zip code. Cause you can do the, the shipping estimate calculator. I'll put, plug in their zip code. I'll plug in my information, uh, plug in the dimensions and the weight, boom, hit, hit, a, you know, estimate and you know, $19 or $27 or whatever. And I just take a screenshot of it and I send it to them and I say, well, here you go. This is what the actual price is. If we went through the post office, boom, because they're getting a discount going through eBay and not going to pay that much. So like, come on, people, if we're in coast to coast, of course, it's going to be higher. But you're not wrong, Paul Fines. Uh, but that's why I do calculated shipping pretty much, because uh, I, I, I very I don't unless it's video games, I pretty much don't go free shipping. Uh, and even on many of my video games, I usually do five dollars flat rate shipping. Uh, but yes, you're not wrong there, sir. Uh, next one up, Justin says, thanks for sharing. I listen to you while I'm doing my thousand steps. I like your positivity. Justin, I appreciate you. Thank you again for your support as well and commenting. I need to, I need to get back to getting consistent on doing the things I need to do to, to shed some pounds. I, I've got a, a walking pad and I was doing it for a while and then I kind of fell off. And so I need to get back on doing my walking pad and it's, I, I do it with my standing. I got a standing desk that up raises and lowers. So what I would do a lot of times when I was consistent, when I jump on my computer to do whatever uh, work related or not work related, I would put my walking pad down and I just walk as I'm doing whatever it is on my computer. <clears throat> so I need to get back to doing that. I also used to do kettlebells. Uh, I have got, got a set of kettlebells and I used to do that and and uh, and I, I've, I've fallen off there, too. So definitely need to get back on track myself. But uh, kudos to you, Justin. Keep up the good work. And, and I appreciate you hanging out as always. Uh, next comment is Sam Wadsworth. Sam, thank you for commenting. I think this is the first comment uh, from you. Uh, so appreciate you hanging out. Hopefully you su you've subscribed. 
Uh, Joe, I'm, I'm curious. I want to know, have you ever had an experience with an accident with transporting your merchandise? For example, I recently ordered something on Amazon. I noticed it was coming from California, living in the South. I also live in the South, North Carolina, by the way. Uh, I was thinking, uh, wow, coming all the way across the country, I noticed that uh, the tran I noticed it was transported by truck, different carrier facilities, uh, but it made it. But it made me wonder what would happen if the truck carry carrying my purchase got into an accident. Does the carrier company send someone out to evaluate? Do they send you the goods that were in the accident or do they try to replace it? Uh, and you wait for the whole other order. It's no big deal. Just a curious question. If you have any experience with this while shipping with eBay, the, no uh, the knowledge would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. So Sam, I would say in to, I, from my understanding and just some through some of the things that I've experienced in the past, and every some of the carriers are probably going to be a little different, uh, but I believe what they do is if there's let's say let's say your your package is just lost, well then it just be you know it just go through the same process of you file a claim and or reach out to the seller. Like Amazon pretty much eats that stuff, and then they 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 deal with the with with the carrier on the back end. Um, they've got contracts with that stuff anyway that they write out write off a lot of that stuff anyways. But uh, if it was like an eBay person, you'd reach out, and I would either you know file a claim with the post office, try to get some of my money back and, and then refund you because that's, you know, that's, I, I can't hold you, it, it, you know, that's all you can do. Now, if the whole truck is dan like, let's say gets, I don't know, totaled in an accident on the highway or something, I believe what they try to do is if there's packages that can still be delivered that are still, you know, and that can be deliverable, they still try to try to process those, get those on the next vehicle and get those where they need to go. If your item ends up being damaged in that transaction, it, I don't I don't think they label them and say, hey, this was in a car accident or something like that. Maybe they do. Um, you just get your package. If it's damaged at that point, then you go through the same business as usual process. Reach out to the seller or say Amazon. My, my, it was it was damaged. Um, I don't think they tell you that there was an accident or there was a, you know, whatever. I mean, maybe, maybe they do. But um, so it would just, like I said, go business as usual. Now, if your package is unretrievable, it's totally damaged, box is crushed and just everything is just flattened and water damaged or whatever. Um, you know, I believe what's going to happen there is same thing. You're just never going to receive your package. It's going to get stuck in transit and say it not ha it doesn't have any other scans. And then you're going to, you're going to, again, it goes back to, I think the same process, business as usual, you're going to file a claim or you're going to reach out to the seller or you're going to, you know, or, or tell Amazon, Hey, I, this, this package is lost. And then they're going to file the claim with the post office or with, you know, UPS or FedEx or post office and do that same process. So I think it's just all pretty much all the same, um, in those cases. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, I could be wrong if I'm, if I'm wrong, uh, I do know just off of personal experience, I had a package one time. It was a weird situation, but I had a package one time. Actually, I've had a package a couple times that the UPS has called me. It's gone to their loss and found facility and they've called me because they do have like loss and found stuff. So maybe they go there and they try to contact the recipient or the uh, sender or receiver and try to make contact to, to, uh, to um, you know, get the package uh, delivered still. But um, you know, that's, that's, that's the only other thing I could throw at you is just based off of my experience that that's happened to me. So I know that's something that, that I'm sure all of them do. I mean, maybe not the post office, but I know UPS cause it happened to me twice. Actually, uh, they've called me from their loss and found facility and, uh, and then ended up delivering that stuff to me. So I, I would say nine times out of 10 is probably just business as usual. You file a claim or the, or reach out to the seller, or if it's like Amazon or Walmart, you, you say you never got it or whatever the case is. And then they just refund your money nine times out of 10. And then they deal with the carrier on the back end. And if it was like an eBay person, you tell them, Hey, I never got my stuff. You see that it's never updated. I eventually have to just eat it, refund your money. And then I'm going to file a claim with the post office and try to get my money back. I would say those instances are probably easier to get your money back. Cause I'm sure those things are tracked. And on the back end, they can see that there was an issue with that truck or something like I'm sure their database tells them a little more than than we're going to see like it's not going to tell us in tracking that the, that the that the truck got you know sucked up by a by a, by a tornado <laughs> you know and and all these packages went flying everywhere you know and are unsalvageable so you know I would say that they probably in their internal systems know that have a little bit more information because the case team gets your case when you submit a claim or the claim team 
they get it. And I'm sure they have more access to see that kind of stuff. So if your package was scanned into that truck or whatever the case is, and they know that truck was in a, in an accident or sucked up by a tornado, I'd imagine they would just do a payout on it and not give you any grief. No, they wouldn't ask for an inspection or, well, they couldn't because it was, it was never delivered. So they couldn't do an inspection anyway. They would, and actually nine times, I've never had a problem. If everything's lost, they pay that out. No problem. So they would, I would imagine they would just say it's last scan was in Arkansas. You know, it's lost. We're just going to pay it out kind of thing. So what are you doing? Um, I'm almost done. And then we'll, we'll go get some Jersey Mike's because I got to run to, to, UP, uh, to, to the UPS drop off. So if you want to wait a little bit, what time is it? A little late, a little late today. That guy pushed us back. I had the, I had the washing machine guy, uh, come back. And so he pushed me back a bit. All right. Um, so hopefully that helps a little bit, Sam. Uh, next comment up is Kurt. Kurt says, yo, yo, average Joe. It's a tape measure. Yeah, it is a tape measure. Yeah. I, that totally went. Pew, I'll, 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 la, la, land. I actually even watched that back. Cause I do watch some of my videos back a little bit. And uh, I said tape measure before, like literally right before. And then it went out and out the window. And I couldn't remember. I like, I was just like, Joe, you just said tape measure. Uh, and I think I don't see your comment here. I think it was a reply to something you asked me. Oh no. Right here. Right here says, yo, yo, average Joe, it's a tape measure. Let's get people subscribed and get Joe to 500 subs. He deserves it. Thank you, Kurt. I appreciate you, man. Thank you also for your continued support. I think Maybe it wasn't your comment, but I believe somebody asked me what size tape do I use? And, and YouTube doesn't always show me here all the comments, like, especially if it's a reply. Um, so, uh, may, maybe I misread it, but somebody asked what size tape do I use? I use three inch tape. So to whoever asked that, I think it was Kurt, but whoever asked that question that I missed, uh, or didn't show up here cause YouTube didn't, sh didn't populate it here for me, uh, on my comment section. Um, Three inch tape is what I use. Three inch tape. So nice, nice, big three inch tape. I love it. I used to use the little two inch tape, man. It's a game changer when you go to three inch tape. I can tell you that. Um, and then the last comment, King Rod, King Rod. Uh, I think this is the first comment you've left as well. Thank you, King Rod for hanging out. Hopefully you subscribed. Let's see what King's got to say. King, and I'm going to reply to your comment here. Joe, what, what type of places do you visit to find many of the items you list? So King, my me there's a lot of places, a lot of places you can source. I normally, and, and a lot of it goes down to your, what you enjoy because you got to make this enjoyable. Um, I enjoy yard sales. Um, I enjoy marketplace pickups because it's easy and convenient. I see it on my phone. I'm send a message and then I always follow up with, Hey, do you have any other games you're looking, you know, cause I source mainly games, but when I'm out yard sailing, uh, well, I source games, video cameras, military stuff, but uh, and a bunch of other things, actually, bow systems and and things like that. But mainly is games. I really enjoy games. So that's the, the heavier side of what I source. But I also I also follow up with, hey, do you have any other you know games? This is more so our marketplace. You know, I can do a quick message. Hey, will you take X amount for an offer? They say, yes. Awesome. We'll meet up, blah, blah, blah. You know, do you take cash app or Venmo, whatever, whatever. We figure out what they're going to take and then a meet up spot. And then I always follow up and try to ask, hey, do you have any other, you know, uh, video games or systems you're looking to part with? You know, we can go maybe try to do a bigger deal. And that leads a lot of times to bigger, bigger deals. Well, not a lot of times. In some occasions that leads to bigger deals. A lot of times they say no. Um, and then I also do the same thing with yard sales on like Thursday, Friday, when the yard sale posts start coming out, uh, you, you know, easy to, Hey, do you happen to have any video games, blah, 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 any military stuff, video cameras or camcorders or cameras or any bow systems or any stereo systems or equipment, anything like that. And then I kind of go from there. If they do, then, you know, do you have any, any of this or any of that or any, anything else you're looking to get rid of? And I do the same thing when I'm live at the yard sales, power the ask, like Chase says, chase after the right price. Um, and I've been saying that before I even was watching him, it's the ask, you got to ask It's part of being a good salesman is probing and asking, you know, so that was just, that's just how I operate. And so I try to make it a point every yard sale to ask, especially if I don't see stuff that, that I'm looking for is to ask. And that a lot of times opens up, opens up doors and stuff like that. So, and then networking with people like the lady that called me today, I did two marketplace pickups, uh, well, one marketplace pickup and one previous network pickup that I made with a yard sale, a lady at a yard sale who 
knows I do video games. And so she called me up and said, Hey, I found a bunch of PlayStation two stuff. You know, you want to come get it, you know, let's make a deal. So I went this morning and picked like 25 PS two games up from her. Um, but networking with people as well, um, because that's how you really kind of get, you get those phone calls out of the blue when you're, especially when you're down and out and you haven't been finding stuff. And then you get a phone call from one of your connections and they're like, Hey, I got a bunch of video game stuff. And it's like, awesome. You know, so those, those always, and then, um, so anyway, I'm rambling now, but so, so yard sales, um, uh, marketplace are my main sources. Um, I, we do storage units occasionally, not too often. I used to do them a lot more, uh, but storage units, um, um, estate sales, um, uh, thrift stores. I don't do a ton of thrifting, but thrift stores, uh, I do occasionally walk into thrift stores, occasionally walk into pawn shops. Sometimes they have some good deals. Um, margins are thinner, but sometimes they have some good stuff. Um, I, I don't know why I'm drawing a blank right now, but, uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'm missing one or two, but those are, those are kind of like the main, the main things. I also do online posts. So like I've got a Facebook group. And so this is, this is a little unique to me because I run a Facebook memorabilia group, uh, sports memorabilia group on Facebook. And I do, uh, uh, signed autograph uh, or autograph football helmets, uh, in that group. It's a private group and, uh, I've been doing it for six years. So I've got almost, almost 10,000 members in that group. So a lot of times, maybe once every couple months, I'll put out a post, Hey, looking for this, looking for that. And I'll get a bunch of people message me back and I'll end up doing some deals that way. And they'll ship me the stuff. And, you know, and, and, and so, uh, but that's, that's more rare. I mean, that you gotta, you know, if you have a huge friends list, you could always put it. And I, I always put it on my friends list too. Cause a lot of the guys that are in my group, are friends of on we're not actually like personal friends but i add them as friends on facebook so i'll actually put a post out on my facebook page as well not only that group but also my facebook page and so people will see that and then i've had a couple local people that i used to work with contact me i've had you know friends uh people of friends contact me say hey john told me about your whatever he you said you do this and that you know i've got this i'm trying to sell you, you know you're interested so posts on facebook um help um, I try to solicit on marketplace, but a lot of times when you solicit for stuff on marketplace, they'll take it down because it's not meant for soliciting for stuff uh, or looking for posts. So like I'm looking for this or looking for that. A lot of times they take those down because that's against their, their, their policy because it's for selling, not for that. So, but I have done that in the past and, and uh, that sometimes they squeak through and some of them, depending how you word it, will still post. Those will post in groups. They just won't post in marketplace. So if you actually are part of like yard sale groups, you can do those solicitation posts in yard sale groups and those won't get taken down. Um, and, and not only yard sale groups, like I'm in a neighborhood uh, on several neighborhood groups and they've got their own buy, sell, trade page or groups. And so you get in those and you just put out, hey, I'm looking for this, looking for that. So that's, sometimes I do that too. So anyway, Online is another option, several different ways you can do it online as well, like I just said. So those that's how I do it. Those are just my nuggets, my tidbits, kind of how I do. Um, hopefully that helps a little bit. <clears throat> um, I used to do a lot of a lot of estate sales, but I've just I've, they've, I've been turned off by estate sales. But you can definitely make a killing at estate sales too. estatesale.net, I think it is. That's that's your prime place to look for estate sales in your area. And they usually start on Thursday. So you can be the early bird, get there on Thursday, super early, try to get in there, the top first 10 people in. And, you know, if you see good stuff, you know, on the pictures, then you can be one of the first people in there. But you, the only problem with, with the state sales and why I don't like them is if there's good stuff, you got to get there like two, three hours early and camp out before they allow people in. And that's just that's just not for me. Um, so anyway, again, hopefully that helps. That's the last comment. Let's go over some sales. No, nothing crazy. Uh, nothing crazy. We've had four sales for two ninety six oh nine. So nothing crazy. The big sale, the big thing. I just picked this up was a, a switch, a switch uh, with the controller dock, all that good stuff. Uh, no games, which controller dock, your switch, uh, uh, Joy-Con controller, uh, the Joy-Con triggers, the power cord, the HDMI cord. I do a whole bundle. I do a memory card in there, uh, and then the case. I had it up for 220. Somebody sent me an offer for like 190. I sent them back an offer for 205 and they took it. I actually just picked this one up and listed it like two or three days ago. Got this from Marketplace for 160 and it had six or seven, seven or eight games with it. 
um, like four of the games are like $30 pops. So, you know, 30, 60, 90, 120, 120 plus the other ones are like 10, 10, $15 pops. So there's about another 150 ish dollars in profit to make off of that once I sell the games. Uh, so I'm probably breaking even at 160 after fees and everything. I probably actually made a few bucks still just selling this. And then I still have like the seven games to sell, which will yield about another 150 bucks. So it wasn't a bad, it wasn't a bad pickup. Um, <clears throat> then what sold was. So that said, that sold for 205. Next thing that sold was uh, Beautiful Joe on GameCube. That sold for $21 free shipping. I'm going a little quick because my mail lady's coming back and I need to get this stuff out of here. Y'all remember from the last video, Super Scope 6 for $6.50 free shipping. This is terrible. Don't do this. I used to sell every single game that came through that, that, I, that I saw individually. Uh, up until last year-ish, I uh, stopped. But there's still some in my inventory that are... And then this got swept up. It was $7.99 or $6.99, and then it had a 15% discount on it. So now it was $6.50. It was like, man. So I'll make like a dollar, maybe. Just so don't recommend doing that. Uh, my threshold with video games is $9.99 free ship or better. Anything else, it's $15 typically plus shipping and up before I put it on eBay. Anything under that, I'd try not to mess with or very rarely will put it up. If it's if it's $14.99 free shipping, I don't like doing it. I will do it sometimes if, if I pick something up, thought it was something and it was nothing, but it's it'll sell for 15 free ship. I might put it up still, but I don't like, that's not what I'm sourcing, that kind of stuff. So it, it's gotta be 15 plus shipping and that's just my threshold. Some people are higher, some people are lower. That's just how I do it. Um, and then the last thing that sold was the Cabela's. This thing goes together. I'm not going to put it together, but a Cabela's shotgun for the Wii uh, with two uh, two games, Buck Hunter and Bird Hunt. Uh, this sold for $25, this lot. So for $25 plus shipping. So uh, that's it. Uh, I have another offer pending uh, from somebody, but I'll, I'll get to that afterwards. So that, that'll be on tomorrow's video. Uh, but anyway, that's all. Well, actually, I won't be here tomorrow. By the way, I don't know if I mentioned it. I'm going to be on vacation. So I'll be back on Tuesday. So we'll go over all the sales between today and basically Tuesday morning. And I'll be back with another video Tuesday. So I, uh, I may do a short while I'm out and about because I do plan a yard sale. I'm going down to Florida, uh, surprising one of our friends, uh, a fam family friend, fam fam another family, friends of ours, really close friends of ours that uh, surprising uh, uh, them for um, uh, the wife's birthday. And so we're going to go down there for like three nights, maybe four. So I'll be back Tuesday. I may have already said this early in the video, but uh, I'll try to do a short because I am going to go source. Last time I was down there, I sourced and I did pretty good. Um, so I'm going to go out Saturday morning with like 200 bucks and just go out and, and, and see if I can I can pick up some things down there and and source down there again. And, and uh, so I may do a short possibly. But if not, you'll see me again on Tuesday. So there's that. Uh, there's lots of videos y'all can check out. Uh, keep my watch hours up. That'd be amazing. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, uh, especially for the new folks, if you want to see some older videos, it's all the same stuff, just your average Joe, but I appreciate y'all. This is a shorter video, more so where I want to be 20 to 30 ish, 30 ish minutes, you know? So this is, this is a little shorter than, than where I want to be, which is great. Good. Sometimes shorter is better. Uh, but that's all I got for you guys. Enjoy the rest of the day. Enjoy uh, your weekend since I won't be on here at all. Uh, except for maybe a short. Uh, just to show off some of the things that I picked up. But outside of that, enjoy your weekend. Hopefully your sales are going well and hopefully they continue to go well. Uh, and hopefully you have a wonderful sourcing weekend this weekend. Hopefully I do too. And we'll see y'all on Tuesday. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you haven't and uh, drop comments. I'm looking forward to my, when I come back, I'm, I want to come back to a ton of comments. Uh, so yeah, so we can touch on a bunch of stuff and talk about stuff because that's what I like to do. I like to share and hopefully it helps, helps you guys out. So we'll see y'all on the next one. Bye everybody.